5.30, we'll all stand. We'll get the meeting started. I'm pleased to have Jim Morse this morning for the First Baptist Church to join the vacation. Okay, let's pray again. Precious Lord, we do indeed acknowledge you as God, the Creator, Sustainer of life. Lord, we come before you acknowledging that we move and live and have our being in you and you bring all purpose to life. Lord, I thank you for this great city and I thank you, Lord, for these who lead it so well. And Lord, I thank you for those who volunteer and those who've been elected and those, Lord, who work so diligently. We ask your blessing upon our community. We ask you to, to pour out your spirit of, of blessing financially and, Lord, we pray for businesses and folks to move in. We ask God for a housing situation to, to get better. We ask you, Lord, to give wisdom and knowledge to this council and for those who make decisions. Lord, we do ask you today to accept our thanks for the rains that you've sent, how you blessed us. Lord, we pray that you will to help out our water situation. Lord, we just pray to continue the rains all throughout the summer. Lord, we just are honored today to thank you and to say we are blessed because of you. Lord, now just take complete control, please, of this meeting, give wisdom, knowledge, and, and just give a great time of, of uh, counsel together as, as Lord as they make decisions. Father, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tell us, would you lead our pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America.
questions from the council on that? From the audience? I have one other item under public works. Um, I, I want council to be aware of that uh, next meeting we're probably going to bring to you a resolution regarding uh, voluntary water rationing. Um, we, uh, you know, we're 100 percent false at this point in time. We, we are in the process of bringing Clinton Lake online and we will need to do that in the near future. Um, however, though, we want people to understand that it is important to conserve and be understanding that our situation, although not an emergency state, um, because of Clinton Lake, it, we, we were hoping that some of these heavy rains that came in over the past few weeks um, would increase our uh, lake dramatically. They have not. Uh, we do have uh, significant water in there to get us through the summer, but we want to continue to conserve and ask people to conserve. So we're going to ask you to, as we did last year, on a voluntary level, and also we're going to create a, a lot of education to the public, understanding you know, what the right time is to water, when to water, how much to water. Um, and, and be uh, be thinking uh, of a sustainable way to get through this summer as we as we try to hopefully um, um, see the Clinton Lake continue to rise. But at this point, we want to we want to be very cautious. So we will be bringing that to you next week, and we want to continue to educate the public on on the on the concern we have because we still probably only have estimated 100 million gallons of water in in Clinton Lake, and we are very close with the heat that we had last week that we own. We're at a peak almost with our FOSS water um, as we're taking that. We'll continue that philosophy of taking mostly FOSS water. <clears throat> we will have to go to Clinton, Clinton Lake at some point. And so we're, we're going to ask people to conserve so that it won't affect our business industry. We, won't, we don't want to affect those folks. But in the irrigation areas, we want to be able to conserve and cut back. So um, I want you to be aware that I will bring that to you in a couple of weeks. And that's all I have in your public work. I have a question for the course this. Does the plant's been shut off now for since last year? Does it have to, it have to be done to it to start it back up, or you just push a switch? Well, it has to be flushed out. I have Arnold talk about a little bit about what we have to do to bring that. It's plant. not a big deal. Well, actually, we have the pipe coming all the way from Clinton Lake. Will have to be flushed out. That's about 1.5 million gallons of water that has sat there and went bad. Oh. And uh, the plant, it will take about two days to fill the plant, let it set. Let everything get started. Jeremy can elaborate a little bit more. Yeah, basically all the filters have been setting for all this time. Yeah. And all that's going to be re-backwashed, disinfected. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to get it up and going and running at a perfect state, but it's doable within a two to three day period. Okay, thank you. And it can affect the pool at all opening later or can the pool is filled. Um, we used a false water to fill that, so it's it's full and it's being chlorinated. It'll be up, up and operating. We obviously want to have that as a, that recreation open for kids this summer. And, and now that it's filled, it's not really a. It has to be, you know, filled up a little bit, you know, during the summer due to evaporation. But um, the the large amount, the 350,000 gallons, was, was done. So, but you know, the, the area we'll be targeting is irrigation, and so people are aware that, you know, like. Uh, you really probably don't need to be irrigating a lot of solid right now. Um, it's, it's the, the, the rain we've had has been very helpful for that. So we have to back off. I can let you know we're, 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 gonna, we're not going to have sprinklers on here at City Hall. We're not going to have sprinklers on at, at the conference center. The, where we have sprinklers, like at the golf course in Acme, those are the ponds that, that are from wells. So we're, we're doing our part as well. So we're going to do, you know, be conservative. And we're going to ask the public to do the same thing. Would it? Would it be detrimental to, to do that, that backwashing and get everything kind of online right now? I mean, are we, are we going to do that in the next 30 days, 60 days? Yeah. Uh, well, once we do that, we need to come online. And once we come online, basically, we have to run the plant at a minimum, and we can't shut it down over a two-day period. Okay. So once we do that, we need to be ready. It to, needs to be fully functioning at right. that point after the backwashing and the filters flushed and all of that. Right. Then it needs to be. So once we make that plan, right. and that, that's really the, the the conservation effort is we do not want to bring Clinton Lake up and run it until we have to, because once we begin that operation, that becomes a constant operation, and and we don't want that water to go bad. That's a waste. So we are asking folks to conserve now. Get hopefully we can get through May. It'd be nice to have that into June. But you know we we understand that we're in a dry period over the next probably seven days. 
if we get, you know, a um, little mother nature luck, you know, some rains come in, that will continue to help us. But we'd ask people to do their part as well. Because we do not want to get into restrictions. We don't want to have the police out writing tickets to work for water. Right. Um, we want people to voluntarily help us. Uh, last year at this time, when we asked people to voluntarily cut back and increased our usage, <laughs> I think people got a little nervous that they weren't going to happen. But we didn't have rain last year at all. But this rain and the moisture we've had is, should help. But we want people, I'd rather be talking about this now. Um, we've been talking about it all winter, mm -hmm. but we don't want to not talk about it and all of a sudden say, you've got to stop water. We want people to be understanding that the, the situation is not bleak, but you can do your part as well. Conserve water. And that's really, really the part of it tonight. And we'll bring, be bringing that back in two weeks. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Any questions from the audience? Do I hear a motion to adjourn these authorities? Second. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Rodolph? Yes. And Vice Chairman? Yes. And now we'll be the regular Industrial Authority. First item is a consent agenda. Second. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Rodolph? Yes. And Vice Chairman? Yes. Action items. Consider commercial real estate purchase. Steve, you want to bring us up to date on this? Uh, we brought this to you uh, last meeting in Taz Trucking was here um, uh, asking to purchase five acres at our industrial area uh, for $10,000. What you have in front of you tonight is that contract that was put together by our city attorney. And we ask for uh, your approval so we can move forward on the closing. I made a way to approve it. I second it. Trustee Rodolph? Yes. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Rodolph? Yes. And Vice Chair? Yes. Next item is the sale of the property that we discussed last time. Yes, this is the uh, Keaton Modi property. Keaton is obviously here again tonight. Um, agreement of seventy-one thousand dollars, and the and this is the contract that talks about uh, all the details, which includes um, the effort to have construction begin in eighteen months, um, split <coughs> the property in future development, undeveloped areas. Is also talks about the utilities um, and his effort to uh, cover some of the utility costs that we need to bring to that location. Um, this is contract was put together again by the city attorney and Keaton is here also to get any questions. Well, the contract <coughs> provides for him paying thirty thousand toward the seventy thousand. There's water uh, at Red Wheat. Uh, the sewer is, um, is probably approximately 2,500 to 3,000 feet away, and so we'll need to bring that up. And so that cost estimated, you know, seventy-five thousand um, dollars plus, you know, depending on some, some pricing we'll get. Um, Mr. Modi has uh, offered to pay thirty thousand dollars for those utilities, which include obviously connecting water to the public as well. Right, paragraph seven, you've got the closing of paper 15. You've got the name. Yeah. That, uh, something more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> that we continue to work with the chamber on that um, changeover and I think that, that's actually going very smooth and I, I think that's going to be a good partnership and we appreciate that. Any questions from anybody on the council? Anybody in the audience have a question relating to this? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Hewlin? Yes. Trustee Rodolph? Yes. And Vice Chair? Yes. City Council need to approve the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? Second. Councilwoman Smith? Yes. Councilman Cuban? Yes. Councilman Murdoch? Yes. And by Grant? Yes. Okay, the first action item. <clears throat> Consider a request for fishing dock and walking trail at Acumbrick. Pardon. 
council, the staff has been working on this for actually four years now, um, trying to get a fishing dock grant, They're working with SWOTA. Um, it, our efforts are, are coming up dry uh, and being delayed and delayed. And so we can actually, for, the, for our cost share to do that project with the grant, we can complete the project ourselves and we would ask to do that, not to, it's in the budget, not to exceed $49,000. This would get us a fishing dock, run some asphalt trail up to that location, including a trail that would also extend to a high, high peak overseeing the pond, uh, a real nice area, kind of a sightseeing area. So we would strongly recommend um, you to allow us to do this and it's a, it's a budget item that's been actually in the works over the last couple of years. It's just not been we are go We can go through MOTA. Um, we have to complete the project, as you know, and then we can submit to try to get some. And we are going to submit at this as well as um, the lake uh, bulldozer work to try to get maybe ten thousand dollars in MOTA. This is not included in, the, in that. We have to fund this up front, but we we're going to try to put some MOTA as well. Are there a lot of fish in there. There's a lot of fish in there. What kind of fish? Bass. Do we have bass? A lot of big bass. There was an eight pound bass caught out of there last year. Really? So it's ready. Once that this is done, it's ready to go. Yeah. In fact, I fish. The, 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 I've, I've seen people fish. Parks director, and, and we're planning on a uh, fishing derby as soon as this is installed. Oh. And we're going to do that this summer. So I think um, this could be a good addition to the park. How long will this take? How long will this take? We'll have it done before July first. Oh, Councilwoman Smith? Yes. Councilman Rudolph? Yes. Councilman Cleveland? Yes. And Vice Mayor? Yes. <clears throat> Request for tennis court repair. Well, they said they didn't need something. Okay. Council, there was some work done on the tennis courts uh, a few years back. Um, we've got about, um, well, as Arnold's got his report here, about 950 square feet that need to have some concrete repaired and restriped and, and surfaced. Um, we've kind of basically Pulled some funding through some other areas of capital. It's some capital dollars that were, that were budgeted this year to repair these, um, um, and we would like to get those repaired. I think I think it's uh, important to our community to have uh, facilities that, have, that that I guess um, are up to a proper standard. So we would ask. You know, in the past, if I'm not mistaken, the schools helped us with that. Did they not? Did anyone even ask? Yes. Yes. And I. I, I Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been having conversations with the superintendent, trying to work with him. They this year because we this wasn't a, a, a planned item. Um, it was just brought to my attention after I got here. Um, I, I spoke to him again, and they're trying. If they have some extra dollars, they're trying to get all their dollars are focused on their facilities they're doing right now. But if they have some extra dollars, they would help. Um, but it, okay. I think no. I think they'll help. Do you think about I don't know how much. I think okay. they'll want to help. We've got a good relationship with the school, yeah. um, but we still need to to do this. And there's some other areas, like McLean Archers Park, that we want to do next year. Yes. So I think there's still some stuff to do that we can work with the schools on. I I kind of done a little. I've done a little research, and I I've talked to Phil Beasy, and I talked to my neighbor Daryl MacArthur, who is a frequent visitor at the, at the tennis courts, and. <clears throat> I want the tennis courts to be be done, be nice. The, there's a little bit of an issue, I think, with back in 2008, the contractor that was recommended to do the job from the bid was was John Hensel Tennis Court Systems. It, it appears to me from the research I've done, there were some issues immediately following the um, application of the surfacing. After they did the surfacing, about three months after that, there were some areas that seem to be um, coming apart, some cracks, some other issues. Those things were brought to the attention of Brad at that point and to the city manager. Nothing was really done about it, I, I'm, I'm assuming. I, we spent $30,000 at this facility currently already. We're going to spend another $20,000. And it appears to me, I could be wrong, is this the same contractor that did our did it before. I it, am it, not certain. It, it appears to me that it is. And, and I, looked, it is. I, I looked at the bid price. It, it looks like this. Merit Tennis Systems gave a quote back in March, 
to Brad. They didn't put in a bid to do the work. They made a quote of somewhere in the neighborhood of um, $28,471. The Hensel court system was, of course, $26,964. Um, Merritt Tennis Court Systems has been in business since 1979 in Oklahoma. And I've, I've done a little bit of research about their background. They seem to be really qualified company. What I'm saying is I would like to see us possibly come back with a kind of a broader plan. I'd rather not just patch something with the same company that we used two years ago that kind of may or may not stood behind their product. I walked the courts on Sunday, and there are several areas of delamination of the concrete, or the friction course didn't adhere to the concrete. Not sure, because it hasn't popped up yet, but you can feel the undulations as you walk around. It's, it's not really safe, and I'm not sure if that's part of the 950 square feet. Are you talking about the far west court? I'm talking about the, yeah, this, this west, and then the second from west, and the third. The only two courts that are really in good shape are the two farthest east courts. Um, what would it cost to have a minor little concrete overlay and a surfacing done and be, be done with this project for a while? Because the use of this particular place of the tennis courts, it doesn't get a, get a whole lot of use. So in two years, we, we're going to spend fifty thousand dollars out there, and, and it shouldn't have fallen apart in two years. That's what I'm saying. With it. And, and and I just don't. At this point, I'd like to come back and and see what we could do in a different direction to make it. Um, well, if you if you like the long term tennis facility plan, we're more than willing to bring that back to you. I will say this: I cannot speak to what happened in the past. Right. It looks like to me. It was an overlay project on some um, on some concrete that was very aged, and it will not stick. It, it will not last. And I don't know. I can't speak to what what the previous parks director or the previous city manager knew. This is a past job, so that they can continue to use it over the next few years. I, I believe what you what you're asking for is a, a, a number that's probably a couple hundred thousand dollars, if not more. Could be you know. And I think. We can bring that back to you. It would take an engineer, uh, or a, in my opinion, a, a sports engineer to look at those facilities. It talk about if you talk about an overlay of asphalt, asphalt, which I would not recommend, or redoing the concrete. It could be a, a huge, huge price, um, and I, that would take an in-depth uh, evaluation. That's not budgeted for. <coughs> we could use this twenty thousand dollars to budget, for, you know, have someone come in and do that. It really needs a feasibility study on the entire. This would be a pass job, and a pass job is expensive, but it allows the school and the kids that are using those facilities now to have something that's safe. It is the 950 square feet? Is it isolated to the farthest west court? Most of it. A little bit on the second from the west. And the, the concrete underneath, like you said, is deteriorating. There is no way it's going to last over two to three years. Uh, You're absolutely correct that, that it needs a, a full reconstruction. Um, and I actually have experience in that particular area, and that is a very large, expensive item. And I think that needs to be a, a partnership with the schools. This is a, a patch job. It is a pass job, but I think a pass job is needed to bring so that you can continue to play down there while we look at a long-term solution. And that, that is why it's in front of you tonight, because it's it is it is needed. What if we had trouble with this last company? Why don't we? I can't take speak a couple, of that. I think a couple of weeks and get a quote from that from, from Merritt the, from the other. Company. Did they? Did they yes, we, we have a quote from Merritt now. What what was uh, the, it, it was. I believe it was about eight thousand dollars higher. I can't speak on this company versus other company. I mean, all the issues this company may have. Now, I've not spoken to the tennis coach, um, and, and and we do not have that previous parks director is not here anymore to talk about those issues or the city manager. 
we can do some more research and bring it back in two weeks. That's fine. Let's, 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 let's take let's, a look because I have a problem with giving the contract to somebody who know did bad work. Yeah. If that's if that's true. Yeah. That, and that's go. that's kind of the impression that I'm getting. It's who we used in 2008-2009. But nobody has brought to my attention the issues with this company. But we can surely do some additional due diligence, and I can maybe try to speak with the previous parks director or the previous city manager, as well as the tennis coach, on what the issues were. We were trying to, and we are trying to, to, to bring up a facility that needs some work and, and bring it up to standards until, until we can have something long-term done, which we have a lot of needs in the community. Brian, this is probably not a high priority, but we can do something now with twenty thousand dollars. But definitely two weeks will not matter. We can bring it back in two weeks. We would like to try to get it completed before the end of the budget year, which is July first. And we are in a time crunch, but we surely two weeks we can bring back some more information if we find out anything. Well it'd probably be advisable to do that for the simple reason this company did didn't do the best work. Yeah, we can do some. We, we're not aware of anything. Yeah, yeah. We can surely, you know, if you well, want to say the tennis coach, I don't know. Yeah. And, and Daryl, my neighbor, he, he mentioned the fact, too, that, that, that it was a very substandard construction job. First, we've heard of it since I've been here, but we sure look into that. And I appreciate you bringing that up tonight. Thank you. I'll bring right. back in two weeks. Yeah. Do we need a motion? No, I can just take one. We can right. like one motion. Okay, consider a request to purchase pickup for the street department. Yeah, we just we have a budget budget a, a replacement here. We have a ninety seven that's got thirty three thousand miles. We would request uh, a three quarter ton pickup for the street department, not to exceed twenty thousand <coughs> Yeah, is that right? You will? Is that the plan, Ronald? Yes. We're gonna it has a flat bed on it. We're gonna remove that, paint it, and trade the whole vehicle in. I move. Minus the bed. I move we get authorized to purchase the picket. Second. Councilman Hurdle? Yes. Councilman Cleveland? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. And Vice Mayor? Yes. Okay, City Manager's report. Okay, I got a couple items. Uh, council for you tonight. Um, I thought I'd have a flat review for you um, on our housing, um, but I got an email from uh, our engineer. Plan to have that in two weeks for you to look at. So I have that. Uh, fire bids, I have a fire, I have a meeting with the architects on uh, Monday. I expect to have bids out within two weeks, and so we have to get that out. And we also, our police project is started, it is going rapidly fast. We're very pleased with what's happening. We have a progress meeting with architects and the contractor Monday as well, but if you ever like to see the updated, we can tour up downstairs, but they're, they're moving quickly. We'd love to give you a tour so that uh, things are happening in that project. If you haven't noticed, we uh, we had the exterior of City Hall painted. Uh, I think it looks much better. Um, it goes with our brown roof, and I'm, I'm very pleased with the way that things are looking around here. And a uh, reminder of our budget meeting uh, next Thursday, 5.30 at the Frisco Center. We will have those budgets out to you ever this week and this week. So, the end of this week. so you can have plenty of time to review, ask questions, or have those questions ready for us. And I'll present that to you Thursday at 5 30. We don't have any food or anything down there, and that way if everybody gets hungry, the meeting won't last. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you think. <laughs> That's all I have. Okay. Do we have any? Audience participation on anything that's been discussed or anything you want to bring up tonight? No? Well, if not, make your motion to adjourn. Summon. Okay. Councilman Hewlin? Yes. Councilwoman Smith? Yes. Councilman Rudolph? Yes. And Vice Mayor? Yes. We stand adjourned then.